to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my latest set of reviews and updates of what I've been up to for the past week. So I'm going to start it off with the cover image being um, an AI generated image from Dune 2. So as you can tell, that's going to be the highlight review for later in this episode, but I finally had a chance to watch it. And overall, it was a very good episode. Or sorry, not episode, but overall a very good film. But I did want to start with the usual show so um i had a chance to watch the walking dead the ones who live season finale i'm hoping that's the case or it's a season finale and we get more seasons with rick in it or they tie it back to what he's up to and more back to the regular walking dead show but overall the season finale was a very good episode we have rick and michonne finally going after the crm uh, rick gets the echelon briefing and takes out the general at that time um, because Rick and Michonne are enacting their plan, um, Rick's friend from the CRM realizes slowly throughout the um, episode what he's up to. But the short of it is Rick and Michonne end up taking out the entire leadership of the CRM and escaping, which all culminated in a very good ending to the episode where Rick finally gets to meet back up with Judith and meet his son RJ. So. All in all, very much worth it. I'm glad my early prediction for um, Judith becoming a zombie didn't come true. <clears throat> Mostly because the ending that they did here was very well done. So definitely worth watching. I, def I do recommend watching all six episodes because it was a <clears throat> very concise season. It's very reminiscent of season one of The Walking Dead where it was a very concise six episodes and it made you want to see more so i'm kind of curious to see where they take her from here what the fallout is for the rest of the walking dead universe does rick end up meeting back up with daryl and carol or what happens with all of that so um i hope they deal with that or maybe even start making the walking dead more about these um bottleneck seasons and tied everything directly into a season rather than you know multi-season arcs or things like that so overall very much worth watching um i did also have a cat chance to catch up on shogun um episodes six and seven um nothing really too much to say there overall good episodes good um interactions with the characters good character development everyone's interacting with each other very well there's nothing bad i can say about it so definitely keep watching that just to um stay on top of all the stuff that's happening in the show um and then as far as star wars a bad batch we had another two episode release this week so episode 10 identity crisis and episode 11 point of no return so we have the bo a bounty hunter finally capturing omega finding them on the island the Bad Batch is unable to protect her to keep her out of harm's way, even though um, she does tell Crosshair that the best way to go, well, the best way to end this is to put a tracker on her and uh, let her be captured. But then um, Crosshair is unable to um, get the tracker on the um, ship, so now they have to go find Tantus anyways. And then we get more background into Project Necromancer and the kids who are in that facility and what they're up to. So it looks very much like an M count thing where with you know high midichlorian testing and all testing into the Emperor getting a perfect clone and all of the projects and stuff that go with that. Um, had a chance to also watch X-Men 97 um, episode 4 motando and uh, life debt um it was a basically mostly an all jubilee episode all in a mostly in a video game which was pretty entertaining um i had a, a very much zero the hut vibe so um the same thing there kind of like with shogun overall very well done and very entertaining different tempos and moods for each one but overall very well done and then, of course, I finally had a chance to watch Dune Part 2. Um, watch it in a good theater with a good sound system. Um, definitely a long movie, just like the first one, but very well worth it. Everything had a chance to grow and breathe. 
the interaction with all the characters, um, um, Paul Atreides' rise and overall learning the culture of the uh, Fremen, um, learning that he, or um, the whole inner uh, relationship with his character and Zendaya, um, and then ultimately taking the um, drink of life or the juice of life, whatever the blue stuff is called, and getting the voice. Um, I liked how they handled um, his sister um, talking through Paul's mom, and then the random cameo um, of her character via Anya Taylor-Joy. So everything was very, very well done. I recommend watching it. And although I, on one hand I hear that there's not going to be a third movie, but then they set it up very nicely to have a third movie to show the Holy War, uh, resolve Paul's sister being born, and all of that and lead into things like Children of Dune and all of that. So, so um, that's why I'm kind of hoping that they do have a third movie to deal with the Holy War, have, have a perfect Dune trilogy of films. And I mean, well, there's not really much else I can say. I mean, the visuals were very nice. The um, Paul's mom um, having the voice to convince people to do things um, like um, Zendaya giving Paul the tear of joy and all that or whatever that was called um, talking to her daughter explaining things that are going on and all of that all in all very well done um, the Harkonnen stuff was a very good story arc um, the only thing that kind of I was hoping for was Paul putting his hand in the box but they had I guess that um, Har other Harkonnen guy do that instead um, and then like, you know, the, the line drop of plans within plans, um, the, um, Ben is Jezra, uh, lady calling Paul an abomination. So just overall very well done and definitely recommend watching it. If you have not seen the first film, definitely watch that first, of course, and then jump right into this one. It'll be a lot of film to watch, but, um, worth the time and effort it takes to watch it. So with that being said, uh, one of the things I realized after last week's episode was that I never actually did the Android app review that I wanted, so I'll actually do that for this week, um, and it's related directly to the game review. So if you're a fan of the classic video game Doom and its sequels, notably Doom 2 and 3, then there's an app on the Google Play Store called Delta Touch that lets you play Doom on your mobile device. So what you do, and it's a relatively simple thing to do, a little bit of technical knowledge but not much, is what you do is you install the game, or install the app Delta Touch, um, and then you have to get the Doom WAD file. So you can get it on archive.org, but then you run into the whole thing with shareware versions and all that. So if you own the games on Steam, um, all you do is you install the game and then you copy the, WAD the Doom WAD file from your desktop to your Android device and um, the app will tell you exactly which direct directory to put it in. You copy it over and now you can play using touch controls if you have a game controller like a Kishi or I think it's a Backbone or whatever it is, you can play using those controls as well. It supports um, both options and you can now play Doom and Doom 1 and 2 on your mobile device. Um, the beauty of Delta Touch though is that it does offer various source ports of um, various Doom um, backends. So if you want to use GZ Doom to have um, various um, gameplay options like 3D look and all that stuff, you can do that. If you want to have the classic gameplay, you have classic Doom and chocolate Doom and different things like that. So different backend functionalities for that. And it, it, uh, each one has their own thing. So if you want to have like a 3D look, extra texture options, screen size options, and stuff like that, that app handles a lot of those various different options. But the beauty is that Delta Touch also supports using um, mods. So if you want to install a Doom mod, you download the file and or the Doom mod file, copy it into the mod folder, load it up in the app. So once you've picked the, you know, if you're playing Doom 1 and you want to play Brutal Doom, then you load the Doom mod file and then you, in the mod button, you touch that, pick the WAD file or the WAD file for the mod and you can start playing it'll load the um mod and from there you can start playing right off the bat and um that's all you have to do it supposedly does support um you playing multiple mods so at a time so if you do have 
other mods that are compatible with Brutal Doom or something like that, you can um, do that as well. So um, the um, app is relatively straightforward to use. Like I said, it tells you which files to copy um, over into which directory. So you can now play it um, directly on your mobile device. And granted, yes, you can get install the official Doom 1 and 2 games from the Google Play Store, but as far as I could see, it does not necessarily support all using any mod that you want. So if you have if there's a mod that you like that's not listed in their official directory in the games, then you can't play it through those official games. So Delta Touch um, resolves that. And then in my case, um, if you never actually played Doom 3 or you want to play that on your mobile device, Delta Touch supports that as well. Um, so it does all you have to do same thing like Doom 1 and 2 you have to now in that case in the case of Doom 3 it does not support um, Delta Touch does not support the BFG edition so you do need to play the original version in, or install the original version of the game it'll tell you exactly which files to copy and paste from your desktop but you can play Doom 3 on your mobile device as well and I was playing on the OnePlus 10 Pro so it was powerful enough to run it so I think so I'm going to assume that most modern devices are capable of playing it very nicely but in general it looks like Delta Touch handles most of that very easily um and then from there it, um it does support the very i guess a certain mod so you do have to make sure the mod is compatible but you can um, delta touch does support using mods in doom 3 as well so if you want to play the trilogy of games you can definitely do that i did see that you could also potentially play doom 64 in it as well i have not tested that as of yet so I'm not going to recommend that so it may be possible but I don't know for sure if that's a working option but um, that's why for me I wanted to recommend Delta Touch this week just because it um, deals directly with the gameplay I'm working on or I'm going through right now of Eternity. So I bring this up because um, of Eternity uses a lot of customized color maps and bitmap palettes and various other backend renderings that are beyond what Doom 1 and 2 have but Delta Touch via GZ Doom supports all of that because GZ Doom supports all those various um, additional options. So in the case of Ev Eternity, if you download the Doom 2 WAD file and then the Ev Eternity mod, load it up into Delta Touch, you can now play that on your mobile device. So as of this recording, I've now finished um, the second chapter and I'm into the third one. So overall, I'm enjoying the scenery in the first one. That was the medieval castle. The second one was a like a tech based kind of thing. And now the third one is the snow level. And I'm very impressed with the design that's going into it. Very nicely done. So um, it definitely does show up some of the enhanced things that the Doom uh, platform can handle. So definitely follow along with the gameplay on the YouTube channel. But um, on the flip side, know that this is all being done straight on the Android device, the OnePlus 10 Pro via Delta Touch and GZ Doom. So. Um, if you're a fan of the Doom franchises, or notably like, especially like Doom 1 and 2, then know that you can play the games with the various source ports that are available in the app, and also play various mods. So if you do, if you do want to go down the trip of memory lane, you want to play a mod that you never played, um, then Delta Touch can help you out with that, and you don't have to worry about an a, a mod being an official port or not. Granted, that does it does make it easy to use official Doom games from um, Bethesda and its software, and then install that um, uh, mods that way. But you do have to sign in and all that stuff. But then, then on the flip side, if you um, don't want to sign in, or if you want to play a mod that's not on their list, then you're kind of out of luck with their versions. But that's why I'd recommend going the Delta Touch route because, especially if you own the games already by a Steam, for example, then instead of buying them again on Google Play, you can use Delta Touch to install the game and then then play any mod that you want. So that is all for this particular episode. So if you have any feedback, questions, comments, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on social media. They're all linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Gameplay videos are up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01. And of course, as a supporter of the show on Patreon, you can get early access to the show, um, ad-free version as well. Um, 
and all of that stuff. So uh, check it out at patreon.com slash pateln01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.